one last bit that I neglected. These uh, extra pieces here, these are part of a ring that goes around the bottom of the big top piece. But I think to assemble it, I'm gonna have to attach these to these uprights first, only loosely, and then uh, disassemble them from this when I have to move it, which won't be fun, let me tell you. They basically go in like here. They're the same length as these ones down here, and they attach, same, same kind of idea. It's getting late, I can't form words anymore. Yeah, that'll fit. Pre-drill holes. Of course, the real question is, if I can't words anymore, should I drill? Ooh, that's, that's a gross edge. Yeah, there, let's just hide that away. And of course I should. Power tooling while tired has never hurt anybody, except one of my uncles. I mean, him and his nine fingers might have something to say about that. Although, to be fair, they did put it back on. So, you know, it's not like a huge loss. He's still got most of his fingers left with all their joints. I believe I've gone over that story before. I will not go over it again. I had enough people in the comments going like, ah, why did you tell me that? And now for the fun part, where I try to get the camera far enough away where you can actually see what's going on. So we, I brought in some help because these boards are long. I have these two stands, you know, the shelves and the ends. I need to connect them with the long boards on either side. Yes, these, these boards here. Okay, I'm gonna need to move these a little closer together and make them aligned a little less suckily. Baby, can you get the ugly side? Yeah, we'll put the ugly side up. Do you want me to come on that side? Uh, yeah, walk over here. Hold this thing up and I'm gonna put some screws. Um, one of these boxes has screws in it. There we go. You got it? Kinda. Kinda? Okay, I'm gonna take a break. Just hold it there for 10 minutes, all right? What? Just kidding. All right, I'm just gonna put in one screw on the far ends of both of these. Right there. Painful. Painful noise. Come to think of it, I totally could have done this with just clamps. But it's not like I have a whole wall full of clamps or anything. It lines up fairly reasonably well. Okay, okay same thing, other side. You wanted your table to be a trapezoid, right? Oh, I forgot how warped these can be. Yep, very, very warped. Is this from Menards? It is from Menards, how did you know? <laughs> Screws will fix everything. That is one. That is a terribly warped board. I'm actually impressed just how warped this one is. I see. You already inspecting my work? Do I pass judgment or pass your judgment or however it's that works? Too soon for me to judge. Position of this one's less important. Oh, actually, I shouldn't have thrown those things. You can tell now because it's like it's That's twisted there. like mad. This board being twisted isn't such a big deal as long as the top edge of it is at the same height as the workbench. Okay, so this is fun. Camera. The camera is looking at this and it looks in the camera screen, I believe, like it's looking straight down at the top of this. It's not. Camera's over that way like a foot. This is just so amazingly twisted. So we're gonna do the clamp trick. I put this clamp on really tight. She's gonna crank down on it to twist it straight. Now I'm gonna put a screw in here to hold it in place and uh, pray that it just doesn't decide to uh, unspring. Could this go really long? Who knows, let's find out. All right, let go, what happens? It looks kind of straight now, not really. It's just bent the crap out of the other side. <laughs> All right, yeah, this twisted, this end just twisted. Now the thing's bowing, whatever, we're gonna cover it up. Now the fun part, the gigantic piece. Um, that middle piece was a good idea. The middle piece, yeah, that'll stop this from bowing down. Yeah. That was the part where I yell, it doesn't fit, wrong size. <laughs> what idiot measured this? <laughs> it kind of fits. It kind of fits. And the thing is not sitting square, but that's fine. I think it's the perfect length, height for me. This is the perfect height, that's good. So this side is square. That side ain't, as you mentioned. 
Might have to change these screws to a little bit Why? more sunken in because that one's sticking up a little bit. Yeah, like that. There you go. Good size, good height. Yeah. Overhang so you can clamp fabric to it. Yeah. Ah. Okay, so here's a joint that I haven't glued or haven't screwed yet. See, it's all loose. All eight of the legs are pretty much on the ground and they're pretty much stable now. But this has no stability to it. The way this is designed, there's no like, there's none of those cross pieces to stop it from, from racking, I think it's called. The only thing stopping it right now is that the ends are flat and they're sitting on a flat, steady ground. So if I were to put in a screw in the middle of each one, it would still, and like you end up putting a bunch of force or something to wiggle, it would, it would be able to do this on you. And you don't want that. So what I did on the loft that I mentioned in college, I didn't, I, I would have a screw in the middle. It's kind of a pivot point, but I would also put screws out here. But the idea, I did like this star pattern thing. So if you have, if you have two screws, it can't pivot around one spot, right? Because if this is going to pivot, then this is going to move and that stops it from moving. So if you have two, it kind of holds it in place. But that's not very strong. So I actually have five spread out about as far as I can, leaving ample room on either side, you know, so it's not just going to tear out or something. And that would actually stop it because anytime it would try to twist and pivot on either of these screws, on any of these five screws, four other ones would stop it from moving. That's not very far apart. The farther apart these are, the better the stability is, you know, the more levers they have. Obviously you're limited to a three, three and a half by three and a half inch square. But if I do this on every single one of these joints, that's eight joints between the legs and the top alone. And then I can do the same thing below where these legs join up with the, the shelves underneath. And anytime, anything to stop where the joints line up with the shelves to stop that from racking will also prevent this part up here from moving side to side, you see? So doing that, that's how I built that loft I mentioned in college and without any cross brace thing and without it being wedged against the wall, I could still hang on it and shake all over and it wouldn't, wouldn't twist at all. Now this is kind of what I did on the playground of the basement and that's why you had the bit of me on top of there shaking the thing back and forth and it didn't fall down and impale me on any of these pieces of wood. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm not going to film putting in a billion screws, but you get the idea. Same goes for the top. Right now the top is what's preventing this whole system from doing this, from turning from a rectangle into a whatever the heck this shape is. It's a parallelogram, but it's not a not a rectangle. So I only have four screws on either end, but if I line the whole thing with it, then every point along the edge will be kind of a, a, a point holding it down, preventing this, this whole thing from, from going, you know, all wonky on us. And I especially want a bunch of these points all the way around because this, this is like particle board stuff. It's not that tough when it comes to preventing a single screw from pulling out. One screw pulling out is bad, but if I have 50 screws around it, they'll kind of spread the load and I'm less likely to lose one. So you're you gonna get overkill? It? So I'm gonna overkill it with the screws. <laughs> the second reason I'm telling you this and not doing it is because overkilling it with all the screws holding the legs onto the top means I have to remove every single one of those screws to get the pieces apart to get it downstairs. See the problem? We'll do the overkill downstairs. So I'm going to do the overkill part downstairs. But this, it is built. Yay, finally. I'm going to hold the camera in my hand now. What do you think? I like it. Hang on. Don't you want to have your sewing machine on top of this? We also have another table that we were going to put a sewing machine on to be on. And besides, the sewing machine can be moved around as well, you know? Right. Now we just have to prevent it from getting covered with crap. Yes. Kind of like that workbench over there and that kiln over there. Yeah, the only reason that one isn't covered in crap is because it's open. All right, we're done. Yay. It's late. It's like past midnight. I know. And I didn't even get to use a welder for this project. No. I'm going to have to do something with metal next time. 
I want to do something. The, the 3D printer, I can't find that 3D printer upgrade I need to use the multi-material upgrade. Oh. So I think I'm just going to wait till the AdSense account builds up enough and just buy a Mark III. Oh, you mean buy just a, a new? Yeah, just another printer. It's good. Oh. And then that upgrade will fit the Mark III. Okay. Maybe build that on stream. What do you think? That sounds like a good idea. That might be fun. How much is it, though? Lots. Okay.